beautiful recitation. Um, and in this episode, he went through Surah Al-Isra, uh, verses 23 to 27, as you heard. Uh, and this part now of the show, we are focusing on the supplications, the du'as, the ziyaras. Did I get that right? <laughs> yeah, I was just checking if you got it right there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I got that right, yeah. yeah. So I think we got that right. Um, and um, in any case, thank you, Mustafa. And we're now focusing on the supplications, the du'as yeah. and the ziyaras uh, of the Ahl al-Bayt, in light of the birth of uh, Sayyidah Sukaina. Um, the daughter of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and to shed light on her life as well as the ziharas um, associated with her is Ibrahim Al Ansari. Assalamu alaikum, Ibrahim. Alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. How are you on this beautiful morning? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. How are you, sir? Brilliant. Thank you, we're well, thank you so alhamdulillah. much. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, so look, I mean, in terms of the life of, of um, Sayyida, Sayyida Sukaina, I mean, there's not a lot of literature out there when it comes to her life. Um, mm. The most or the majority that we know about her is probably related to Karbala. Yeah. Um, so I'm very interested to know in terms of this specific ziyara, um, you know, wh where did you find it? How did it come about? Mm. And, you know, what does it, what does it mean? Who does it refer to? So tell us about the excerpt. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I think uh, one of the beautiful, uh, let's say, um, things we were given through the shrines of Imam Hussein, Imam Abbas, etc., is the network that they built from outside the shrines. Oh. So, for example, the Abbasi shrine, they've got a, um, a web, uh, they've got websites in which they include, for example, ziyaras for the Masumin, ziyaras um, for uh, du'as for specific days, yeah. and of course, many would question uh, why would you trust such a website. Now, personally, um, from my own heart, let's mm. say, uh, I tend to show some trust towards that website just because it comes from the Abbasid train. Oh. Now, because it comes from there, I am sure that there must be some sort of scholar that overlooks it, correct? Mm -hmm. of so, of course, they wouldn't just put anything uh, on there. Then when I looked at the specific ziyara, there isn't really much um, that we could possibly go against because it literally just says, um, it sends salutations, it says... Uh, Peace be upon you, O daughter of uh, uh, Rasulullah. Peace be upon you, O daughter of Imam Ali, of Fatima al Zahra, of Khadija, and of Imam Hussein. So there isn't really much mm. to debate about it okay. to begin with, anyway. Okay. Yeah. So um, even if it wasn't narrated from a ma'asum, it is the normal way yeah. to send your salams right. upon a great lady like her. And in fact, although you said there isn't much literature, mm. it is true in a sense, but also not true in another sense. Mm where Sayyidah Sukaina actually played a very big role during her time. Mm. Uh, Sayyidah mm. Sukaina, even after Ashura, um, of course, when we refer to Sayyidah Sukaina right now, as an Arab, I am referring to Sayyidah Sukaina, the elder daughter of Imam Hussein, alayhi alayhi wa sallam, wasalam. According to different narrations, either 12 years, uh, she was either 12 years of age or 14 years of age okay. during Karbala. Uh, however, after Karbala, she lived a, a long life to the extent where, um, according to different narrations, she even reached the age of 70. Wow. Um, wow. So she even lived uh, longer than Imam Zainul Abidin. To the extent where, so even narrations that tell us that um, Imam Zainul Abidin prayed on her body, of course we would put that to the side. Why? Because um, she lived longer than Imam Zainul Abidin right. to begin with. Now, um, and she's buried where? She's yeah. buried in Medina. She right. passed away in Medina. Now. Another thing with Sayyidah Sukaina, because of her... Sorry, yeah, so just, just, sure. just to focus on that point, so mm. maybe it's due to my own ignorance, um, but it's the first time I hear that she's, she lived till 70. Did you, did you know? No, but, I, but then I, I suppose with the ladies of Ahl Bayt, the, the, the children, you don't really hear much, do you? Because yeah. we're so centralised on the focusing on the actual events yeah. of Karbala that right. I think the women are kind of not... There's not especially, so much out there that we're told about. Especially the aftermath of, of Karbala, there's not much about yeah. their lives no. and, and what they do. So yeah, even the women it's who very work, interesting to yeah. know. To although to although Sayyidah Sukaina, as, as a woman in Medina, played a very amazing role within that city. Mm. Um, possibly very similar to the role of her grandmother Fatima al Zahra. Oh. Very similar to the role of her auntie Sayyidah Zainab. To the extent where she, in fact, mm. in... Uh, in different history books, when you read about her and they talk about her status, they say that she was Sayyidah to Nisa Qawmiha. She mm. was the best of oh, the ladies of her time. Could imagine. But of course, the tyrants will always find their way through to mm. these people, which is why we read, uh, we don't read as much to the extent where, for example, one of the ways in which they try to take her status down 
is they say that Sayyida Sukaina had multiple marriages mm. and she was the one who decided divorce. Oh. Mm. She comes and she, she, tells, uh, she tells her husband, you must give me this much money. Mm. She comes, she tells her husband that I will marry you, but oh. you do not choose when I enter and leave the house. This is not the akhlaq of, of, no. of, of, of a daughter of Imam Hussein who lived with Imam Hussein for 14 years. Wow. She is in fact also the daughter of Rabab, who is the, who is the same mother as oh, of Ali al-Azghar. Right. So she's Ali al-Azghar's uh, sister Aldous, Aldous from the same mother, uh, father and mother. Now, See, after... That's, that's amazing because you often, and again, it could be the narrations from different parts of our communities, but it always said that the Rabab just had these two daughters, mm. um, the two children, and yeah. once they had passed away at Karbala, and, um, subsequently, that she used to just sit out in the sun and that was how she passed away. So you don't hear about this child yeah. being her child. You know, she said the Sukaina, um, she was the daughter of Rabab, so the, the, the sister of Ali al-Azghar. And after Imam Hussein, the narrations tell us that the person who then was who then became in charge of taking care of her was in fact Imam Zain al-Abidin So a lady who grew up in such a household, it is impossible for her to have such stances. Yeah. And just to clear the misconception inshallah, um, Sayyidah Sukaina only had one marriage and it was from uh, her cousin who was the son of Imam Hassan, I cannot remember his name at the mm. moment, one of his sons and that was her only marriage. And also, I was going to say that the children of Ahl Bayt, you know, the Imams, when you hear about them, they're very mature. Mm. They're yeah. not, you know, as usual children because of the knowledge they're raised with, and um, and obviously their their progeny is so pure. So that effect will have on those children. So you know, she wouldn't have been just a twelve-year-old as we see Definitely. today, generation Definitely. You know, X. It, they, these are people that. The thing is, the thing is, there are these anomalies within the the daughters or daughters or sons mm. of of Imams. So, for example. Uh, Imam al-Sadiq, who is actually called Abu Abdullah. Mm. Abu Abdullah based on his son Abdullah. Yeah. Mm. Now his son Abdullah actually went away from the school of Ahlul Bayt. Mm. He drifted wow. away to the extent where um, our seventh Imam, when, uh, when asked about his, his, uh, his old elder brother, Abdullah, he says, Inna akhi Abdullah la yurid an mm. He does not like to um, uh, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm. So there are these anomalies I will say this okay now. The thing is We realize that even Imam Hussein Had a very special relationship to her mm. And it is impossible that If Imam Hussein decided For Sayyidah Sukaina To be the last person that he saw Before he went on towards his martyrdom I doubt that she would be Even an inch Close to what these tyrants um, would, would, would attach to her name, an inch. But we have to remember that even with Imam Hassan al-Islam, you know, they, they accuse him of being a divor you know, an adulterous divorcee yeah. in terms of that he just mm -hmm. kept doing it. So um, it's, again, to, to put that, you know, to shred their, their sort of nobility, their characters, their personalities, and just say, oh, look, at, you know, they were indulged mm -hmm. in divorces and things like that. So it's, it's, you know, you have to look beyond that, don't you? Definitely. To recognize who they were. But in terms of the CR, I don't know how much time we have left, but mm. if you would like to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a question, sorry. I I, I'm, uh, to be honest with you, I'm actually quite mind blown um, mm. by this whole... Because whole, every time, you, you know, when you mention, for example, any time uh, Sayyidah Sukaina is mentioned or Sayyidah Ruqayya is mentioned, I just immediately think of a young daughter, yeah. quite scared, running to her, her uncles or her fathers mm. or her brother or whoever. Um, and I never begin to think, okay, what, what happened after Karbala, mm. did she grow up to be 70 years old, as yeah. you mentioned, and in 70 years old, she was the best of women within her community, yep. within her ummah, so she must have left a, a, a legacy. Definitely. Um, and that's a whole wealth of opportunity to find out, actually, who is this woman? And not a girl. Because yeah. we, we yeah. immediately think Sukaina as a young girl, but no, actually, she's a woman. Definitely. Um, an a old very woman, knowledgeable one. And a very knowledgeable woman. So it's a, a whole wealth of... And actually, it's a bit of a... Um, it's a bit of an unfortunate situation where, again, we, we kind of cocoon the characters of, yeah. of, of Karbala to Karbala only, yeah. Sayyidah Zainab being one of them. Um, and they left a whole wealth of, of information, knowledge, gems um, after their lives. And I'm, I'm just a bit kind of bewildered to think, well, how comes 
Maybe the scholars, I don't know. I, I, I genuinely don't know why we don't know much about part it. Maybe, again, it's, maybe it's just me. Um, yeah. so no, probably I think just you're no, right. No, I agree no, you're with right. you. Yeah. But part of it is, is not necessarily uh, to do with the scholars because the scholars have written and they've written and yeah. they've written. I'm sure they but have. the tyrants, their <clears> work <throat> is, not, is not small. They mm. tried to do this, we we'll say this, in the same way that they tried to belittle the state of Fatima to Zahra. Yeah. They did the same with Sayyidah Sukaina. Mm. They did the same with, with anyone. If they dared to do it with Fatima to Zahra, yeah. Sukaina, who is nowhere close to Fatima to Zahra mm. because of her great status, yeah, but I know do, that yeah. It's a condition, though, isn't it, of being a believer that, you know, like they say, that every rose has a thorn. And if you are that beautiful in your, you know, in Allah's creation, yeah. in his eyes, yeah. then you will always have those enemies. And that is their duty of shaitan, isn't it, to, to sort of I just, undermine. Sorry, sorry. Just, just on that note, I, I wanted to add to the viewers as well. Mm. Um, I think it's a challenge to the viewers um, to go out uh, and, and search for the knowledge about Say this, okay, no. um, I think it applies to all of us. Yeah, really. we don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, me, me too. Do you so. know, it's it's interesting because you think, you know, I was asking you where she's buried, and you think when you go to Medina, you don't actually think about personalities of you know how many there are there buried that belong to the Prophet's family, peace be upon him and his family, and um, and to think we do an injustice to ourselves, don't mm. we, that we don't recognise who they are, what they've done, what the, what contribution to Islam that we have today, um, and it's impacted generations, and yet we we don't give them that honor that they and, um, definitely. and I'm just thinking of, of even more of the possibilities when for example young girls want to attach themselves or, or, or take role models within their lives you know, unfortunately it is the case when it comes to the school of the Ahlul Bayt that the amount of women that they can rely on is is quite limited uh, in terms of for example the the usual Fatima Zahra say the Zainab say the Khadija and so on and so yeah. forth but if you can add say the Sukaina to that or yeah. if you can add even say the Ruqayya to that to that extent um, what they actually gave to them to, to, to but I'd say as a female and then when you look at other schools in our in our religion we are so blessed with mm. what we have okay. because they struggle with female the role mm. models you mm. know and often when you speak to different schools and you say well you know say the Fatima um, you know say the Zainab and you, when you bring the you know the, the sort of the relevance to the Holy Prophet it's actually very um, surprising to them that you know we have such strong person because they'll go to um, there's a mystic in the I don't know which century she was um, Rabia um, she's very well known in the Sunni school of thought um, and that's one of the main women that you'd say that they refer to but we have yep. so many earlier um, in Islam and obviously from the school of Ahabed so we're very blessed like that definitely um, mm -hmm. but and I'm eager that you get the reciting in um, yeah please sorry inshallah sorry it's just I'm um Quite interested to know more. About no, it. Definitely, yeah. definitely. No, definitely. If we have time after afterwards, we could possibly talk more. Um, so the, uh, the ziyara of Sayyid Sukaina, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Allah, Masalli, Ala, Muhammad, Wa Ali, Muhammad, Wa Ajil, Farajahum. Assalamu alaikum, Ya bint al Nabi, Al Mustafa. Assalamu alaikum, Ya bint al Wali, Al Murtada. Assalamu alaikum, Ya bint al Batul, Al Tahira, Fatima, Al Zahra. السلام عليك يا بنت خديجة الكبرى السلام عليك يا بنت خامس أصحاب الكساء وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وآل محمد. Right. Yeah. So look, I mean, just to, I guess, recap on. On, mm. Unless you had a question, Zara. No, I was no? just thinking that it's, it's what you said at the beginning. Very concise, yes. isn't it? Very simple. Um, but very meaningful, yeah. isn't it? And just the recap actually was going to mention that in terms of um, the, the the words that are being mentioned in the ziyara, um, there's nothing to doubt because it's literally um, yeah. peace be upon you, yeah. peace be upon you, oh daughter of this, of daughter of, of or, yeah. or daughter of that, which are all facts, and which are all facts. So um, um, in terms of the the literature himself, it's it's all kind of verified. Um, and uh, say the Sukaina, we know in the narrations live to 70 years old. Yeah. Um, so those narrations that mentioned that Imam Zain al-Abidin was the one that washed her body and buried her were actually false yeah. because she lived past yeah. Imam Zain al-Abidin. Um, and so she was buried in Medina yeah. um, and she was a role model within Medina and, and, and even her status was that she was um, the, the, the chief of the women of, of her community. Yeah. Um, and it's actually uh, a responsibility on us to be able to 
find out more about her life and mm -hmm. see what exactly the legacy that she left um, and to, to be able to tell the, the world that this actually this this girl as we know her to be isn't just a girl she's actually a woman who, who, who got married and had children and um, left something within this world of virtue definitely yeah yeah anything to add on that no that's very beautifully explained thank no? you Summarized it better now. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Well, look, thank you so much uh, again, Ibrahim. Yes, um, you. you know, I'm, I, I've been left in awe um, of, of these facts, and um, I think that's the whole point of the of the, yeah. of the show, just yeah. to get you thinking about certain things that you didn't really know existed. Um, but it's so nice that you do so much research, and you, unless yeah. you're obviously naturally wise, um, I don't <laughs> know. But it's it's nice to have this puzzle wisdom to actually reflect and give us something. You know, that it's uh, it's it's different to what you hear, as we're saying on the pulpits, and and perhaps because there's so many personalities to get through, that it's not as easy on the pulpit to be explaining definitely. every personality because there's such main ones as well. Yeah, um, but at least this opportunity comes, and hopefully our viewers benefit as well. So may God bless you, inshallah. Thank, Thank you Allah so much you once too. again. And, um, right. <coughs> and next time. Yeah, and after the break, you, we will be seeing more of Zara um, with Brother Bilal on the specialist segment. Thank you. Yep, the yep. specialist segment is correct. Um, so we'll see you after the break.